Conventions are like buses. You wait for ages for one to come along and then two come along at once. This time we're at Norwich Gaming Retro Convention and also the Norwich Game Con. Let's do this. One day, two conventions. Hello again folks and welcome back to another live game hunting episode and this is why I love living in the fine city of Norwich. Recently on the same day I had not one but two gaming conventions in the city. First off we had the video game retro market and then we had the Norwich gaming con. Two amazing conventions one day and guess what folks I'm taking you along to both of them. You may have seen my recent video where I took legendary YouTuber Ed Hunt on a tour of the fine city of Norwich and if you enjoyed that video you are in luck as he is also selling at the Norwich Gaming Retro Market. Just before we head to not one but two gaming conventions, I want to remind you folks, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe. As I put new videos out every Saturday live at 5 as well as bonus content throughout the week and I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, one day, two conventions, let's do this. Here we go then with our first convention of the day and the first time this has ever been to Norwich. This is the video game retro market and straight away as soon as I walked through the double doors I could see there was lots of sellers already set up and a face you may recognise, the legendary Ed Hunt yeah, with his absolutely incredible gift for me. Morning, this is a Guitar morning, Hero yeah. gig bag. We're yes, for the morning. Guitar Hero player on the go, a bag for carrying your guitar. And his store was absolutely rammed with some absolutely incredible retro and modern gaming bits, including these awesome Sega magazines, some comics, some box N64 stuff, just a little bit of everything. And this is what I love about these gaming markets, the range, the breadth of items on sale. If that Wayne Gretzky had been the power release, I'd have grabbed that one straight away. And Ed was in his absolute element, selling, chatting, just being a general all-round awesome guy. And yeah, there was some really, really nice stuff on his stall. Not just power stuff, but also some import stuff. And this caught my eye. This Sega Genesis plug and play. Now, I keep swearing off picking these up. But for £10, I had to pick this one up. It's super cool. I love these plug and plays. If for nothing else, just seeing what weird and wonderful games are built into these. So yeah, first pick up of the day is this plug and play for just £10. An absolute bargain. And I just love doing deals with the absolute dealer himself, Ed Hunt. It's so cool seeing fellow YouTubers like Ed Hunt selling at these gaming markets because... A lot of collectors don't ever seem to sell anything. I myself have to admit I am guilty of possibly borderline hoarding and it is cool to see when other people are like kind of selling things as well and Ed and seems to enjoy selling as much as he does collecting and his store had some really good stuff like high-end stuff to low-end stuff just a little bit of everything which is really nice because that's what you want to see at these gaming markets something for everyone and there was definitely something for everyone here we're talking cheap retro box retro some really odd stuff stuff you don't see every time nez snez game boy game gear mega drive and even in television my first pick up here Moving on, and you'll notice here I'm going through some PlayStation 1 games, including some PlayStation Platinum games. Of course, I did manage to find a few games here for the PlayStation Platinum project, but you'll have to stick around to the next episode of that series to find out what games I picked up. But there was just so many awesome things here, including some lesser spotted Mega CD games. If this game hadn't have been faded on the front, I probably would have picked this one up as it is one I don't have in the collection. And games like this, you only find at Games Cons. I'm sure you can tell if you've been watching my videos for a while. I love these kind of gaming, geeky, nerdy kind of t-shirts. And I think we need to see more of these at these gaming conventions. Now, sadly, these were all in small size so they wouldn't have fit my larger stature but I did like just flicking through these I love seeing these kind of game designs some of these like they were just really cool and I'd like to see more stuff like this at games conventions please it's really hard trying to find these kind of gaming t-shirts and being able to pick them up here would have been cool now, of course, when it comes to these gaming conventions, it's not just all about the retro. They also have modern games on offer here. And I think a lot of people kind of 
forget about this. This is normally a really good way to either pick up games that are more modern or if you're even just starting game collecting or just want to collect modern games. At these games conventions, there is something for everyone and normally these are a really good price that you can see there. Some decent Xbox One games, an absolutely amazing Xbox 360 game here in Marvel Ultimate Alliance and just a really good selection of the more modern retro games. It's games like the Xbox 360 which are going to be filling these conventions in years to come and even consoles like the PlayStation 2. But it's when you get Xbox 360 games like this, like Kick-Ass 2, which I have never no, I seen before. Never and seen that shocks me. When I see an Xbox 360 game I have never seen yeah, before, you know you're at a gaming convention. Cool. Now this store had loads of really cool stuff and a really good selection. Like you can see here, PlayStation 4 Days Gone Special Edition. This is the game in a slipcase along with a steelbook, which was very tempting, but I have got the next limited edition up of this one. I don't even know what that one's even called. You can see here some turtles for the PlayStation 5. And the GameCube selection on this stall was one of the best GameCube selections I have ever seen. And I have never seen this game before. Asterix and Obelisk XXL, £75. But the GameCube bangers just kept coming. I was finding more and more games I've never seen before. I've never seen that Superman game. Of course, I've seen Simpsons Hit and Run, but that's when it's getting more expensive, much like Warrior World. There was just some of the big, high-end GameCube games here. The kind of games that a few years ago would have been £40, they're now pushing £100. Some real, real heavy hitters. And here is one of the biggest heavy hitters on the GameCube. One of the biggest games I really want to pick up. Now, I didn't pick it up on this day, and I'm kind of happy in a way now because they have recently as in yesterday, announced they are remaking this for the Nintendo Switch. And as much as I want to buy it, I did pass. One thing that we don't see often enough at gaming conventions is buckets to dig through. I love just digging through boxes like this, trying to see what's hiding in here. You can see we've got some wrestling figures, some general action figures, because I just love the surprise, the suspense of never knowing what you're going to find. A lot of the times these are like kind of low-end items, but sometimes you can pick up some absolute cheap bangers in here, but sadly, not today. And the reason there was a bargain bucket at the side is because on this table they had all of the big heavy hitters. There was some high-end collectibles here, some really, really nice stuff, and some of this was actually really, really well-priced. Some of the kind of newer Alien figures, I myself kind of prefer the 90s Aliens figures, and the thing that really stood out for me, this Resident Evil Tyrant statue was a thing of beauty. One thing I always look out for at gaming conventions, because this is mainly where you find them these days, is boxed and complete N64 games. Now, when I first started collecting for the N64, I did just mainly go for loose carts. I kind of wish I'd gone for boxed games like five or six years ago, as these are getting more and more expensive. But every so often, you'll come across some absolute gems. They're much the same for the NES games. I should have really started collecting for the NES a long while ago, when these games are like three or four pounds each. Now, I would say about the average price for a NES game is coming up to around the £10 mark. But of course, one way to get an absolute bargain at the gaming convention is to pick up loose games. You can normally get these really, really cheap, but at the end of the day, you still get to complete and play the game. But of course, at gaming conventions, it's all about those high-end games, such as this Castlevania for the Mega Drive. Sticking with the Castlevania theme, check out these absolutely awesome Castlevania action figures. Now, unfortunately, I think there's about six action figures in this line, and these are the exact two which I already own, which is really annoying because that Netflix Castlevania series was the absolute... Oh, it was so good. I'm so excited for the next Castlevania series coming very soon to Netflix. There were some really good toys and action figures here, as well as some video games. As I said, it's not all about retro games. Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 2. You can still pick these games up at the gaming conventions. And for some of the rarer games, especially for the OG Xbox, this is probably where you're going to find them. And even some of the newer games for the PlayStation 5. Sometimes you can get a really good deal on these. And that is why I love these gaming conventions there is literally something for everyone from the common games to the very collectible games such as this zombies ate my neighbors now on the outside this looks like the original mega drive release but this is actually the limited run limited edition release here in the mega drive clamshell full color art book 3d glasses absolutely beautiful 
Much like the N64, the SNES is really good to hunt for at these gaming conventions, especially box. Like, look, where have you ever seen this many box SNES games before? Unfortunately, nothing that really caught my eye until I saw this. Duke Nukem 3D for the N64, CIB £35. I was going to pick this up. Unfortunately, I did notice the top was faded. Otherwise, I definitely would have grabbed this one. One of my favourite co-op games on the N64. Again, sticking with the N64. I'm sure years ago, these fantastic coloured N64s used to be way more expensive. And I'm putting it out there now. If these consoles keep sticking around the £100 mark, I'm going to be tempted to go for the full colour set of N64 consoles. They are the best consoles ever made and I love them. Now, I love Star Wars, and I have been repeatedly, and I mean repeatedly, tempted to start collecting Star Wars Black Series figures because these things are a thing of absolute beauty. I think I've said beauty about 100 times in this video already. Just please don't comment that below. These just look so good. They are just properly scanned. They look fantastic. And at the end of the day, I do have to not collect everything in the world, so I did pass on these ones. Here I am perusing some more games and sometimes this can be a bit like overwhelming but sometimes something catches your eye at the corner of your eye such as this Doom Steelbook. Now this is really annoying. I actually had the collector's edition of Doom 2016 and it is missing the Steelbook. If I can get this for like the 5 to £10 mark I will pick up but for £20 I did pass this time. But this store had some really really cool stuff including some absolutely amazing xbox 360 controllers some of these i'd never seen before and i really like this halo one i think i have seen this one in cex before but i do collect a lot of xbox 360 controllers and i think now is the time to buy these because in the coming year xbox 360 controllers going to become more and more desirable especially these kind of collector's editions ones and i think now is the time to buy these unlike these pops which were huge Look at this massive selection of games here. When we talk about overwhelming, that is what I mean. Here is a game I've been to pick up for a long while. WCW Mayhem on the N64. Yes, it's not the best wrestling game on the N64 by an absolute mile, but it's one that's probably going to get more expensive and more desirable in years to come. And at the end of the day, I'm aiming to get every single WWE and WWF game of all time. And to be honest, I'll probably end up getting every WCW game of all time, even though for my money, I do I think there's only around two WCW games which don't suck, pretty much. Like, and that's WCW vs NWO and WCW vs NWO Revenge, which are both absolutely fantastic because essentially they gave way so we could have no mercy. And correct me if I'm wrong, this could be, if not the very first WWF game, WWF Superstars on the Game Boy. I think it was also released on the NES and maybe like the atari or amiga let me know in the comments down below if you know i'm not fully versed in the very 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 early wwf games this was a game i probably would have picked up a tim and t game but the label was a little bit damaged unfortunately but yeah i really enjoyed going for these game boy games and looking for some absolute gems and again sticking with the game boy i think sometimes it's very easy to forget how many iterations there are of the game boy like from the kind of classic grades of some of these coloured ones, to the Game Boy Advance, to the Game Boy SP, even the Game Boy Micro, there's some really, really beautiful consoles. And essentially, this is the thing. They may all be simplistic, but it's the beauty of this simplicity. And for me, I think it'll always be the clear plastic one which comes out on top. Even though I do have a special place in my heart for the tribal one. I remember my brother having that one back in the day and also the NES looking one. And there's just so many iconic Game Boy designs. I just hope Nintendo carries on this tradition with the Nintendo Switch and hopefully it doesn't die with a Game Boy. Now, I love my collector's editions, and of course, I love wrestling. So when I saw this WWE 2K20 SmackDown collector's edition, I had to admit I was tempted. I think it had £25 or £30 on this one, but if you saw one of my videos recently when I went to the London Gaming Convention, you will see I picked up a copy of this game for the Xbox One. So you may be wondering why I'm looking at the PlayStation 4 version. Now, the thing is, this comes with a selection of collectibles inside, but one of these collectibles is a signed picture of a wwe star and there's three of these to collect now so far i only have one i have a signed picture of the rated r superstar edge now if this copy here has a different signed photograph i'm probably going to pick it up because i would love to find all three now this isn't the signed picture this is a piece of the ring from smackdown 
yes an actual piece of ring canvas from smackdown this is a super cool collectible but it's all about that signed picture these are signed and authenticated signatures of wwe superstars so the question is who's it going to be edge kurt angle or ray mysterio remember we don't want edge but of course on this day it had to be edge if it had been any one of the other autographs that have picked this up, I did pass. Now, I may not have picked up that collector's edition, but there's still loads more to see here. We've talked about box games for every console now, even the Game Boy Advance. These are getting more desirable. I remember when you could pick up Game Boy Advance games super cheap, and Mega Drive games are slowly creeping up. Primal Rage used to always be around a £10 game. I have really fond memories of this game. I haven't played it in like 20 years, and to be honest, I've heard it doesn't stand up. Now here is something I've never seen before, and this is the kind of thing I love finding at gaming conventions, the real rarity, something I have never seen before. These Sega trading cards. I don't know where these came from, I don't know what the story is behind these, but I love them. I think these are super cool. I love trading cards of any description. If you put it on a trading card, chances are I would collect it. Like, there was lots of these. I would have loved to have picked up the entire binder, but it would have been super expensive. These were cool. Whenever I go to a gaming convention, I always make sure I go round at least twice. That's because you miss things. Like, this store we went to earlier had some incredible GameCube games and some really rare Xbox 360 games. Xbox 360 games I'd never seen before, and somehow the first time round, I missed this one. Now, I've never, ever seen this Xbox 360 game before. And these kind of games like Tornado Outbreak, other kind of games which I think in years to come are going to get really, really expensive. We looked at Kick-Ass 2 earlier, but I still was really tempted to pick this one up. I don't know if this was released digitally first and foremost, but I, you know, I am a physical collector. I really wish I could have picked that one up. As well as this game, I have no idea what this one is, but some of these kind of rarer jrpg kind of anime looking games that i think are gonna get very pricey in years to come Looking now this is a real oddity i saw this game the day before in last Quite level nice. games akami for the nintendo ds it's funny how a game i've never seen before suddenly i see twice in two days a real rare one a real pricey one but definitely one is worthy of anyone's collection now normally one of these gaming conventions i don't look at switch games too much but I think this might be something a lot of us sleep on. I think some of these Switch games are going to get very desirable in years to come. Never heard of this one. It was quite tempted to pick it up. I did pass it, but let me know if you've played Zombie Night Terror. We were coming to the end of this gaming con, and I just wanted to swing back to Ed Hunt's stall just to wish him best for the rest of the day when I came across this Zelda bootleg cartridge. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I don't pick up these bootlegs, but let me know in the comments down below, what is the best bootleg game you have ever picked up i would have picked this one up but unfortunately it was for the ntsc snes so i did pass but some of these bootlegs i've heard could be absolutely incredible maybe not the biggest collector's items you can see here this was only five pounds but let me know in the comments down below the best bootleg ever now, of course, it wasn't just buying games at this convention. There was also games you could play. So you can see there the PlayStation 1 with the iconic Doom setup, as well as Wii with the possibly equally iconic Wii Sports. Now, here's the thing. We all laugh and joke about Wii Sports, but essentially it did change the gaming world. And, of course, any excuse for a bit of Wii bowling, I had to give it a go. Now, unfortunately, I was a little bit rusty back in the day. I was an absolute beast on Wii Golf and Wii Bowling. But I know times change, but still, to this day, Wii Sports, regardless, is still a lot of fun. So that was the first time I'd been to the Norwich Gaming Retro Market. It was absolutely incredible. It was quite nice. It was a little bit quieter. I did come a little bit later in the day. I met some cool people, some fans of the channel, some YouTubers in Ed Hunt. It had been a fantastic day, but this was not the end for today. It was one con down, one to go. The next con was the Norwich Games Con, and we are not talking games such as Monopoly and Cluedo. We are talking tabletop games, RPG games, board games. If you have not played a board game in recent years, you are missing out. With the massive resurgence in D&D &D recently, some of the stuff on the market is absolutely breathtaking. Like, check out this dungeon terrain. Yes, it does have a high price tag, but... 
these games are getting more and more complicated and more and more extravagant and to be honest more and more awesome like check out this warhammer quest i used to play warhammer quest when it was set in like the kind of old school warhammer universe but now they're doing warhammer quest in the warhammer 40,000 universe I was very tempted to pick this up. If I could paint these miniatures to any kind of standard, I'd have picked this one up. This is definitely on my radar. But if you fancy a more traditional D&D experience, some of the expansion books they're bringing out now are really intriguing. So this is a, the Keys from the Golden Vault, and this is a series of heists to play in the D&D universe. This sounds really cool, especially if you're looking to kind of just drop in and drop out of D&D. You can simply run a quick campaign, do a heist, and move on. Now here is a board game series I've never heard of before, Final Girl. Now this is actually a single player board game where essentially you are the lone survivor in a horror film. As I said, this is the first time I've ever seen this. It looks like there's loads of expansions, like all different kind of genres of horror film. This one was very, very intriguing. Of course, if you're going to play any tabletop or board game, you are going to need dice. And I must admit... I love a good dice set. I love metal dice, kind of plastic dice, see-through dice, light-up dice, heavy dice, light dice, any kind of dice. And at these gaming conventions, you can literally find any kind of dice from any price up to these absolutely amazing levitating dice. That's right, a dice you can roll in midair. This thing blew my mind and it would have blown my wallet this is one of the coolest dice i have ever seen in my entire life you know it did have a very high price tag i got so close to the end of norwich game con without dropping a small fortune until i came across this dark souls the board game for just 60 pounds and if you do not know that is an absolute bargain this was part of the bring and buy sale and for 60 pounds i had to buy it as well as this dinosaur island game it'd been an amazing day with not one but two conventions let's check out the pickups here we are then back in the game room, and yes it was an absolutely awesome day hitting up not one but two gaming conventions and to be honest, it was really nice they were on my doorstep, so as soon as I finished, I was home nice and quick, rather than driving for hours across the country. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. You may notice on my back, I have something very, very special. This was a gift for none other than the absolutely amazing Ed Hunt. It is this Guitar Hero carry case. Yes, 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 you can be this cool and have your Guitar Hero controller in this red octane guitar hero branded bag this is literally like you are going to play a gig imagine turning up at a friend's house for an absolute session on guitar hero carrying this and even better inside here if i actually remember where the zips are on this one there is of course a guitar in here because you know you can't play guitar hero without the guitar and even cooler with this one it has this like totally different gibson strap which i've never seen before thank you ed hunts for this incredible gift and rock on it's quite strange but all of my pickups from the norwich gaming retro market were actually from ed hunt's stall except for some playstation 1 platinum games but you will have to stick around the next episode of the playstation platinum project to see what games i crossed off that list so first off from ed hunt's stall we have this dungeons and dragons in television game and to be honest, I picked this up for no other reason than the artwork is absolute fire. I love the Intellivision artwork. It is just such an absolute thing of beauty. Am I probably ever going to play this game? Probably not. But as a display piece and a collector's item, I absolutely love it. As you saw then, my other pickup from Ed Hunts was this plug and play Sega Genesis. Now, I keep telling myself I'm not going to keep buying these plug and plays because, let's be honest, most of the time these are absolutely terrible. But for £10, I thought I'd take a bit of a risk just because for no other reason it comes with not one, but two of these six button Sega Genesis controllers. And I think by the looks of things, these have the correct connections to go into the original Mega Drive and Mega Drive 2. And these are getting really, really hard to find. And if these work with the original software, then these are really worth picking up. They do feel a little bit lighter and kind of not quite as 
like rough and ready as the OG controllers, but for £10, I think this was a good pickup. And the thing is, the instructions in here obviously look very much like a Mega Drive 2. I think with a lot of these, they're kind of very generic looking plug and plays, but with some of these games, the consoles you get on there are worth the kind of price of admission. So what I'm going to do is stick this onto the TV because I've never seen this plug and play before. And it'll be interesting to see what games this console has on it. Here we go then. I have plugged the plug and play into the CRT TV. It is all powered up and we're ready to see what games are on this console. So flicking it on. It's not exactly bells and whistles, but you can see it is a 368 in one console. It is crazy how many games they can fit on these plug and plays. And I think what is crazy is how incredibly short the kind of controller lead is. It's like, it's so incredibly short, but that's a really annoying thing. And to be honest, we're on the first page. Sonic 1 is there. Let's check this out. Let's see what it is like compared to the original game. And to be fair, so far, is it here? Is the music incredibly slow? Let's see what this plays like. I don't know what it is about these plug and plays. The old music always seems partially off, but. Controller seems good, gameplay seems good, but I think what will be quite interesting is seeing how this compares to the actual copy of Sonic and see if we can play the actual cartridge of Sonic on this plug and play. Let's try this plug and play console again, except this time, rather than emulation, we're going to use the original software. So you can see here, I have a copy of the iconic Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Mega Drive. So let's try this rather than the emulated version, see if we can find any subtle differences. So right off the bat for me, I feel like the graphics seem a lot sharper, the music sounds a lot better, and the controls feel ever so slightly more tight. This is the thing, of course, when you're using emulation, you're probably going to have a better experience going back and playing the game on the original software. And this is the thing, with a game like Sonic the Hedgehog, a game that is so readily available and so cheap, it's kind of rude not to play the original copy of the game. Now, I can understand emulation when it comes to some of these rarer or more difficult to find games, but when it comes to a game that's so common like this, I think it's better just to pick up the original game because you're getting a better experience. But when it comes to these plug and play consoles, I think you can also argue like these are worth picking up. At the end of the day, the original Mega Drive is a console that was made in the early 90s. And at the end of the day, it's not gonna be around forever, but emulated consoles, will be. But of course it wasn't just a Norwich Gaming Retro Convention this weekend, it was also the Norwich Game Con and I did so well getting all the way to the end without spending hundreds of pounds on dice, even if some of those dice were levitating, but it was at the Bring and Buy sale where I did my two big pickups. Now the bring and buy sale was a really, really good idea. People could bring along their unwanted games to sell for just a low fee of one pound. And I picked up two games which I've been looking for for absolutely ages. The first of which is this one, Dinosaur Island. Now this was originally a Kickstarter game, which unfortunately I did miss out on, but it was so popular it actually made its way to retail. Now this looks absolutely awesome. You know by now I'm a massive Jurassic Park fan and in this game, you essentially compete with other players to make the best Jurassic Park. Yes, in everything but name, this is essentially a competitive Jurassic Park building game. This looks absolutely awesome and I cannot wait to jump into this one. Here we have our biggest pickup this time and I do mean big. This is Dark Souls the board game. I've been after this board game for the longest time, but as you can see by the size, this commands a high price. But as a board gamer, if you have ever played a game by Steamforged Games, you know it is worth it. I am super excited to jump into this one. They made the Resident Evil board games. They made the Gears of War board games. And one of the best things about these incredible board games is the miniatures. Check out these miniatures from the Dark Souls board game. 
This is why I love Steamforged games. The absolute quality and the attention to detail on these miniatures is absolutely incredible. When it comes to the Dark Souls game, it's all about the bosses. And I really think they've captured the essence and the power of these bosses in these absolutely ginormous miniatures, which sounds a bit strange. But this is the thing. In Dark Souls, you fight these big bosses. And with Dark Souls, the board games, I cannot wait to see how many times I die trying to beat these incredible bosses. There we go then folks, two awesome conventions in one day and I absolutely love hitting up these conventions so please let me know any upcoming conventions down in the comments below. I love travelling around the country, game hunting, hitting up these conventions and who knows, hopefully soon I'll be hitting up your local convention. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and as always, keep playing the game. See you soon.